Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're just going to go ahead and fix this real quick, the EXP bar. Just like we did with the HP bar. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to do GUI progress bar um, EXP bar. Very easy peasy. And then we're just going to go ahead, open the CPP file. And then we're sadly, we're just going to have to fix all of this again. But uh, pretty much I'm just going to copy the HP bar. Just like that. And I'm going to paste it right in here. And we're going to paste in these values uh, from, from the original exp bar right so that one was already one 5.6 for the y and then the width and the height pretty much the same i think it's a little thinner that's why i put 1.9 there so i'm just going to put that in and then the max is not going to be hp max now it's going to be exp max or exp next and then vm and font still the same no biggie uh, and it doesn't really seem to be any more issues here is only an issue of the color which we're gonna have to fix eventually um, but I think I'm pretty much we can just remove all of this like that and once that's done let's just go down and make sure everything else works so first of all delete it as well this exp bar and Anything I did in the HP bar, just like that, I'm going to put that into the update EXP bar as well. Uh, only thing is I'm going to change EXP bar update EXP. Okay, so that should make sense, right? It's, it's the same thing as the HP, is only we're using the EXP values instead. Um, and it's a little dumb since we have different bars for different stuff since they basically do the same thing, but... You know, it just, you know, makes it a little easier to work with having having them separate. We could have one bar for everything, that, but that just makes it a little more complicated. Um, anyway, just to render it, all you have to do is render it like this. ESP bar, render. And everything should, uh, should be fine. So see how much code we removed? A whole bunch of code. All right. And it's, it's a really good thing since this might be a lot bigger... Uh, very soon right since we're gonna add all the skill GUI stuff all that stuff. It's gonna be pretty big So the, the less code the better. Let's just run this. All right, so we got a little issue here. Obviously it is Yeah, I forgot to uh, set this to exp bar. I had this as an HP bar and Obviously you don't want that so in your init exp bar just make sure you do this exp bar equals new progress bar and once that's done hopefully no crashes should be good to go. All right, good to go. So that is uh, working. That is working as it should, as it should. Uh, the only problem is obviously we're using the ex the HP bar stuff for that. So all those values are being used. So if we go into GUI.CPP and we go down to wherever we put it in, update, that's fine. Right here. All right, so uh, we have our set character size with the modifier obviously that's not great for us as well as the inner color so to combat that to fix that what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna put these down and I'm gonna add a few more things here it's gonna go really quickly it's not gonna take that much of a time that much time um, let's just go down to wherever it is progress bar okay go ahead in here now, obviously, we want that last, so I'm going to keep it like this, and then I'm going to say SF color, uh, inner color, okay. And while we're at it, we might just, we might as well just give it a background color. What do you guys think? Would you ever want to change the background color? Um, probably not just now if you want to add that in there just go ahead and do it if i ever find a need for it i might add it in but i want as few of these parameters as possible so i'm just going to keep it like this uh, in our color and then we're just going to do a un unsigned what am i doing unsigned character size just like that all right character size okay good shit 
Go ahead and copy this. Paste it right into the uh, CPP file. Boom. Okay, so now we got a more we got a bunch of more things to play around with. So I'm just gonna do set inner color to inner color. Okay. And then we're gonna set this to char character size like that. And it's basically not the character size, it's the modifier for it, but you know, we'll just call it character size anyway. It doesn't really matter. And all these positions, we need to calculate these uh, in a different way. But they're pretty much at 50%. So pretty much in the center. Looking all right. Looking all right. Um, this color is fine. Max width, everything. Okay, that's cool. Now it's going to complain in here. Since we didn't give it the colors and everything it needs. Uh, max value, we'll keep it right there. There we go. SF color. Um, I don't know, blue? Let's just say blue for now. And then character size, I don't know, EXP, EXP bar probably had 120. So I'm going to leave it at that. And copy this. Paste that right below here as well. And this was 180. So I'm just going to put 180 on there. And red. Okay, let's just start going with this. And we'll see where it goes. Working progress bars, hopefully. All right. Okay. All right. You know. Yeah. You know. You know. All right. Let's see what what just happened. So HP bar, 120. Was that right? 120. Where the larger it is, probably. You know, probably makes it smaller. So let's try with 200. Let's go ahead with that. Yeah, that made it a little smaller. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and write 220 here. I'm going to leave it at that. Not going to touch it. But it works. It works. So once that's done, guys, the GUI part is is a little, you know, cleaner. And I know we want to work with more fun stuff. And we're going to go ahead and do that right in one minute. But, um, yeah, I just want to talk about this quickly. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm preparing to add all the player GUI stuff, right? And it's a lot more fun to play a game when you have a nice UI, it's working nicely, you can add stuff, uh, you know, your inventory, you can easily just contextually move things around, open up your skill bars, see what's going on and everything. And it looks nice, right? So that's why I'm kind of working on this a little bit now and again. So uh, it keeps the motivation going if everything looks nice and tidy. But, but without further ado, redo, redo, let's just go ahead into our entities area here and add a new class boom as easy as that enemy boom inline virtual not inline virtual destructor also 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 we're going to um, have entity as a base class and just go ahead and say okay i know you guys want enemy stuff you guys want combat i want combat too I want to work with this. It seems really fun working with this stuff for a game like this. So we're just going to go ahead and close down all this other stuff since it's working. And go ahead and focus on this. So enemy, the enemy class inherits from entity. Boom. That's exactly what we want. Now we're going to do the if, if, and if enemy h. Define h. And if. Uh, boom, enemy H. Okay. Good stuff, good stuff. There you go. And the CPP file as well. Nothing special there. Now we're going to have to look at how um, player does it. So uh, let's just look at the player's stuff here. So, okay, so you create a player to position using a texture sheet. Probably going to be the same thing here uh, because pretty much... Uh, Let's just copy, you know what, let's just copy this stuff here. Let's just copy that and put that into enemy, like this. Oh, whoops, without the destructive, there we go. Okay, now we're just going to do enemy. And it doesn't really have a attacking variable yet, so we're gonna, just going to remove that enemy. In the components, we don't need in the components, sorry about that, we don't need that. Uh, we need init animations, definitely. Enemy, enemy. 
Um, all that stuff, great init variables, great. Create hitbox, all this stuff, great. And enemy, good stuff. Now, let's go in here and let's paste these parameters right into that point right there. And once that's done, let's make a functions portion here and initializers up at private, the private areas of life. And we're just going to say initializer functions. And then we got our variables here. So here we go. Let's do, let's see what we got in it. Variables in it animations. Void in it variables. And void in it uh, animations. What's up with my memory? I'm kind of almost forgot. I almost forgot that. But there you go. That works. All right. So we're going to add a bunch of animations later with another texture sheet for an enemy, an example enemy. And this enemy is going to be either a base class or it's just going to be enemy with a bunch of types. And depending on the types, we're going to initialize these animations. We might load an enemy from a file. That might be the best way to do it, probably. Um, maybe. But we don't want to do that in real time. We don't want to go ahead and um, load a bunch of enemies in real time from files. Because that really lags up your game. And that's a good thing to say just, just right off the bat. If you're loading textures in your game and stuff from files or anything from a file while you're playing in real time then you got a big problem because that's why you're going to have a bunch of lag. All right. So if you're experiencing a bunch of lag, don't do that. Probably said that before, but I just want to make sure you guys know. All right. That's a very important thing to know. That's why in this game, we preload everything into our state, everything we need. So we might preload a bunch of enemies and just make copies of them uh, when required. So we're probably going to do that. Anyway, let's just go ahead, make a very simple enemy class. Boom. Movement component, all this stuff. Great. Everything's great. And... Destructor is great. So, boom. Good to go. Good to go. Let's just run this. See so it doesn't crash. And uh, hopefully it should work just fine. New game. Alright, working fine. Working great. Um, boom. Now, to before we end the video. Just before we end the video. I just want to make sure one thing is complete. So in the next video, hopefully we can just uh, get a player to render. Or a... Uh, enemy to render so I'm going to just copy this part the update and the update and the uh, render part and I'm gonna paste this in here and then we're gonna create these functions straight up in the h file so the update and the render function Like that, simple, very simple, right? And remove those parts and a semicolon. Good to go, good to go. Now, there's probably a few uh, few errors here. I'm going to remove the sword. Doesn't have a sword. Does not have a sword. Sprite it does have. Sword doesn't need updating. Hitbox component update animations. There isn't any update animations yet. I'm just going to comment that out. Update attack, there is none. And movement component, there is. So, we're just going to update that. And uh, good to go, good to go. All right, guys and girls, that's about it for this video, I'd say. Uh, we have the class ready. Sorry if it went a little fast, but just go ahead and look through the code. Basically, all we did was just copy-paste a bunch of stuff from player, things that we might need later. So these functions that we have now in enemy, very basic, but they'll make it so that we can render an enemy at least. Um, and we might not need all of these things, hitbox component, all that stuff. We'll keep it for now because it helps us. Uh, with movement and stuff like that. So it's going to be all right. Uh, but again, thank you so much. Please check out the description box. Consider dropping a like, subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out. And just in general, thank you so much for watching and your, all your support. All right. And yeah, I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye-bye.